just on the way back from the airport. N- new signing in the back, Andy Carroll, the big man on campus, the head honcho. Andy, how was the flight, buddy? Oh, very good. Oh, that's great to hear, mate. That's great to hear. I was talking with some of the locals about you, bud. Um, yeah, about when, when you last played. How I didn't actually know the answer. When did you last play a game? That's been about five months, I think, last game. Sunderland, April last year. Five months ago? Oh. Uh, okay. okay. Well, are you, are you ready to score some goals at the very least, bud? Because we need them. Yeah, I think so. Probably. Probably. Pro- Andy, mate, that has not inspired me, mate. That has not inspired um, I mean, look, he's going to be a star striker. I've got faith in him, even if he's not so sure. How can this possibly go wrong? How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number nine of Park 2 Primera today. I'm ready to rumble. It's a double header, two huge games. We're going to be taking on Pontevedra and Deportivo, two teams breathing down our necks, possibly the two hardest games we have left of the season, back to back, both away from home. And of course, both just a couple of games since uh, we took on Pontevedra last episode where we lost 4-3 and while surrendered our lead at the top of the table to them. I think whoever scheduled this league didn't like me when they scheduled all of this. This is another tough couple of games that really quickly could knock the wind out of our sails. The good news is, since last episode, we've steadied the ship a little bit. You know, a draw and then a defeat was pretty gutting, to be honest, especially because I felt like in both games we were a tad unfortunate. You can see against Ferrol, we won 1-0, which was... Okay, I suppose. Cedric got the goal for us inside the first five minutes. It was a good team display... Again, the striking issue where we need someone who can score goals is still kind of prevalent. It wasn't quite so prevalent, though, in this second game as we took on FC Andorra, a 7-0 win. Yeah, this was one of those games where every single shot you see goes in. I think the most notable thing in this game is Ceballos uh, got a hat-trick from right back. I don't know how he did it either. Uh, I would show the highlights for this game, but we'd be here for half an hour. Given the fact we've got two matches today, I'm going to make editing Jack's job easier. One thing of note, Andy Carroll came on off the bench in this game. He's here. It's real. It's happening. I think I'm a little bit excited. And not only is Andy Carroll here, we've also got the other Andy uh, who has joined us. We talked about him last episode, a super versatile centre mid, the kind of player who is a delight to have. And once he builds up some match fitness, he may well take the spot of Reco in the starting eleven. Of course, uh, centre mid last year was a position where we were leaning on loans quite a lot. This year, I feel like we've got three top quality centre mids between Andy, Reco, and then, of course, Di Vicente, who... It's been a little bit slow, shall we say, as of late. He's looked a little off the pace, not quite living up to the high standards he set for himself last season. But all in all, plenty of reasons to be optimistic, plenty of reasons to feel rosy. We just need a goal scorer who can score. And whilst, you know what, I don't think Andy Carroll is quite ready to start today's game, he is going to be sat lurking away on the bench. Worth noting that Anigo was unregistered in order for us to be able to register Andy. And, uh, well, we ended up unregistering Diaz, our third choice goalkeeper. For some reason, I thought that we had to register three goalkeepers for the league. It actually turns out there's just a limit of only three goalkeepers max being registered. So... I think we can get away with two goalkeepers. If they both get injured, we'll have to promote someone from the under-19s. I look across this squad, we've got lots of coverage, lots of depth. I feel really, really good about things. Now, today's first game is against Pontevedra. Uh, They were promoted last year like we were. They kind of did well enough in the league to go into the new third division, but they weren't able to ultimately get completely promoted. You can see here, uh, they've had an interesting time. A team who have never been super high. They were predicted to finish 11th. They've started the season very, very well and find themselves in fourth. Uh, Perhaps the easier of the two games today. Uh, Certainly a little more nervous about the Deportivo match on the horizon. So in terms of team selection for today's game, it kind of picks itself with the exception of the strikers. Um, I feel like the rest of the team is relatively kind of settled at this moment in time. Foster on a 6.9, Andy Carroll 
only one appearance on a 6.7. And also you can see here, Mahika only on a 6.87. Yeah, we need a striker to really stand up and be counted. Uh, maybe today's the day that Foster steps up. Maybe it's the day that Andy Carroll comes on off the bench to show us what we've been missing. Going into this game, we're going to play our own brand of football. I'm hoping that despite being away from home, they're going to be able to, you know, control the play, dictate the play, and, uh, well, cause Pontevedra some issues. Okay, unlike the last match that we did when we were sat here for an episode, I've managed to not balls up a team talk yet. Plenty of time still to do it. But the players, they feel positive. I feel positive. Hopefully, today is the day where we really stamp our kind of mark of, yes, we, we are promotion contenders. I wouldn't mind another 7-0 like we got against FC Andorra, but that might be fortuitous, and we need finishing better than that. Foster, clean through on goal. Would Andy Carroll have scored it? Would he have even gotten the end of it with his pace? I don't think we can truly know, but that was wasteful. Already halfway through the first half here. This is not the ideal start, although we're on the attack here. Maybe we can make something happen. Di Vicente to Carassa, who continues to be just absolutely top draw for us. Di Vicente plays it through. Is that in? It is in. Pablo Torre's been given it. It's one of those weird goals in Football Manager where I don't feel like I'm allowed to celebrate it. I think the defender has cleared that into Pablo. Carassa brings it forward, lays it inside. Di Vicente... It ping-pongs around. It's cleared against Pablo. It's in the back. I'm not going to complain. I'm, I'm not going to... Well, 1-0 up. We'll take it. I did notice that uh, Bicho has got a little knock, which we could possibly take him off for. Uh, I, I have been reliably involved. His, his name is actually pronounced Bicho, but it's Bicho now. Not, not with a T in it. B Bicho. <sighs> okay. D focus on the game, Jack. They've scored. This is, I can't enjoy good things here. Oh, I'm sorry, Beecho. Maybe if I called him Beecho, we wouldn't have conceded. Quick free kick taken short. Knocks around very nicely. I mean, it's just a really, really good goal. I feel like Machado could have done a little more there. Didn't even really react to the goal. We have a corner, though. They scored with their first shot on target, and while we cannot hit the target there, quickly approaching half time. 1 1. Feel a little. A hard done by, shall we say, after that. A game not with a whole host of chances for either team, really, but it's 1-1 at the break. May it make a difference for us. I know that you're capable, lads. You know what? I think it's time. It's early on in the half, but I think it's time to unleash Andy Carroll. He's on the pitch. He's repping the number 18 shirt, the giant of the man, the hunk of a man. It's time for plan B. And well, Sabata bringing it forward for them here. And oh, I'll tell you what, Machado's made a big stop there. I feel like he's not made as many saves as I perhaps hoped he would make for us. That was a good one, though. Give him credit there. And now we have a set piece. We hit the woodwork once from one of these and we've just hit the crossbar again. This time it's the other centre-back in Matic. Last year we were pretty good at getting our centre-backs to score. This year they've been a little bit quiet by comparison. Not for a lack of trying. And oh, that could be a missed opportunity yet again. And now we're gone here. Uh, Bicho is really struggling. So we'll take him off. I think we're going to bring in Zach. Zach's been very good recently against Andorra. Got a 9.8. Might feel a little hard done by not to start this game. But we'll bring him in in the pos position where he shone previously. And while we've got a corner to deal with here, as it's whipped goalwards, it bounces in the box. And Di Vicente's given away a penalty. What are you doing, man? We've been here before. It's a penalty against us. Machado, you're on a 7.0. Can you make the stop for us? He gets a very weak hand on it. Unfortunately, Aguiar is going to score. It's 2-1. We are not singing in the rain. In fact, we are crying in the rain here. I mean, Machado's got to stop that, hasn't he? That is not good goalkeeping. I've got one last sub. Cedric's on a 6.1. Cedric, are you feeling okay today, mate? We'll bring in Hardy for him out on the right-hand side. Fresh legs are on the field, but not really doing anything. They've had five shots. They've been clinical. Let's look to just up, up the tempo slightly. We've got five minutes to try and get a goal back here. There is going to be a highlight. I feel pretty unfortunate so far in this game. And of course, in going a little more attacking now, we could leave ourselves exposed. But fresh players on in the final third. And Andy Carroll... He's there. He's not done anything yet, but there's still time. Mario, big clearance. Wondered if he might be able to get that over the ponytail 
of Carroll there for a second. He's managed to do it, but we've still got possession here. Pablo Carassa should go down the line. Does go down the line. Hardy's there. Options in the middle. Andy Carroll is one of them. He's Mr. Sitter. Andy. And you've got to score that man. And that, my friends, is the opportunity. <laughs> we lose 2-1. And I'm not sure we deserve that. I mean, the penalty for them inflated their XG massively. The chance fell to Andy Carroll at the death. Maybe I should have started him. Maybe I shouldn't have brought him on. Maybe I shouldn't have even signed him. But he was there for the chance. And it's a defeat. And it is a defeat that is going to slide us down the league. We are now behind Deportivo. We've still got them to play. If we beat them, we can leapfrog them still. But... That, now, that game now seems all the more important. We are losing these games against the promotional rivals right now, against the teams we really need to win against. And whilst they are all away from home and they'll welcome a time where we play them all at home, it's impossible not to feel a little concerned, perhaps, that these are missed opportunities. Anyway, the Deportivo game is in a week. We're going to go away and prepare for it. I'm going to get shouty-shouty with the strikers. We need a goal scorer. Why did I sign Andy Carroll? I wish I'd included an injury release clause. I really wish I'd included an injury release clause. Five to six months. Five to six months. I mean, it's got to be up there with the worst transfers ever, surely. Two games played. I want to say I don't believe it, but I absolutely do believe it. It's only been two days since I was just here. I thought, we'll get to the next game. It'll be fine. Andy Carroll. <laughs> It's not ideal. It's not. It's not. Let's just keep going to the game. I can't. I, I can't really believe it. I wish I was returning back from the Andy Carroll stuff and going to sit here and say, there's been no more injuries. The whole of the rest of the team is available. It's going to be fine. Foster's unavailable. He's injured. And just to make things worse, um, if we look here, uh, three players away on international duty. Now, whilst they're not starters, they're useful players to have around. And, uh, well, this is going to be the toughest game of the season. Away from home against Deportivo. A Deportivo team you can see here predicted to finish top of the league. If we just look at the season preview, we're considered the two big dogs in this league. Uh, their key man is Keko, who is a right winger. We're going to have to try and keep him quiet today. If you're wondering about the media Dream 11, uh, Foster is in it, Torre is in it, as is Carassa, which... I feel like at this point, I just feel, I feel quite attached to Carassa. I know it's very early days, but I have already been looking at the possibility of signing him. Porto have given me a quote of £275,000. Now, I could theoretically, I think, afford that by doing some rejigging, given the club's current financial predicament, though. That doesn't seem like the smartest use of funds, at least right now. So in terms of team news for today's game, Andy Carroll's not available. He's, he's out for a while. Foster is injured. So it's Mahika who's going to be playing up front for us today. Elsewhere, Cedric, and th this might be harsh on Cedric. Cedric has let himself down as of late. He's not been good enough. He's got a 6.68 average rating in his last five. I've dropped him and I've brought in Hardy to play out on the right-hand side, cutting in on his left foot. I have actually considered with Hardy playing him as a striker for us. Um, he's had a pretty good season so far. Three goals, two assists, a fair few appearances on off the bench as well. You can see he's played a whole host of positions in the attacking mid department. The one area I've not tried him in is the striking area. He's natural there. Who knows, if Mahika gets off to a slow start today, that is an option we may look to exercise. Elsewhere, Di Vicente disappointed me last game. He gave away a penalty. So with that in mind, we're going to bring in Andy to play as the box-to-box -box midfielder. I feel like Andy is just such a versatile player. can just slot in and play any role in centre mid. I've been let down by others, Andy. You're not going to let me down. You're going to be the Andy who turns out to be a good signing. I hope. Besides that, though, we've had a week of rest. A few players on the fringes unavailable because of international duty. Uh, but you know what? I feel like we're as ready as we're ever going to be for this game. And uh, we've got to give a squad number. Andy Carroll. I'm sorry. Capani's having your number 18. He probably is never going to play another match for us now, is he? I gave him a contract extension after five games. Andy Carroll is not going to play five games this year, it would appear. So despite there not being an injury release clause, he's probably not going to be around here for too long, which 
may be a positive. Either way, we've got the little pre-match thing going on, which means that I think this game is on TV. The internet know, the rest of the league know, this is the two big dogs of the Spanish third division. Two teams who have a long steeped history playing in La Liga. And uh, well, this is a game that we need to win. If we lose this, whilst, you know, we are going to have an easier run of games, it will be more than a cause for concern at that point. Early highlight here. I mean, if this is for us, it's great. If it's not for us, it's not what I want to see. Reco with the ball, giving it to Hardy, giving him the nod ahead of Cedric. Hopefully that's going to be a decision that is justified by the end of this match. As Reco has it, gives it back to Andy, gives it to Carassa. Andy again, look at this passing. More of this. Is there an end product? There's a maybe a penalty here. I mean, I thought that was a good tackle, but it's apparently it wasn't. I'm confused. We've had so many penalties, haven't we? And it's going to be Andy over the penalty. Andy, be better than the other Andy. I don't know what to say. <laughs> what do I do at this point? Football manager. I mean, when your luck's not in, your luck's not in. <laughs> A penalty miss. I should have let Bicho take it. Mahika. He's only got one goal. Could he get his second of the season? He's earned... No, right. B Bicho's on this penalty. That's better. Change up the taker. <sighs> Please. I might, if we miss this as well, I might just go and cry on the sofa. Okay. Okay, relax everyone. Calm down. Bicho scores. It's his seventh of the season. I think that that's maybe his sick from the penalty spot. <sighs> I don't know if I should breathe a sigh of relief, a, t a sigh of disapproval. All that matters is that we're a goal up. And one thing I have noticed, and I think is kind of apparent... When we dominate the ball like we do in games like this, we end up getting so many penalties. We kind of terrorise teams, pinning them in their own 18-yard box, forcing errors out of them. Deportivo have created absolutely nothing. And there's another highlight here, which I want to believe is going to be in our favour. Reco to Lopez, back to Reco. The number six dinks it towards Pablo in the box. Andy wins the huge header. Carrasa with space could go inside. The right back, he shoots. It's blocked. Hardy keeps it alive. He gets it into Carassa, who hits it. That's what we want to see. Carassa bailing us out. I think that's his first ever goal for us. He's got plenty of assists, but that is the first time a strike of his has found the back of the net. And after two pretty disappointing games I've had to endure with you watching upon, that is a much better goal and a much better start to this game. Half an hour gone, two goals up. More of this. Not, not this, not what is this, not, look at us, trying to win the ball high up the pitch, trying to wrestle possession away from Deportivo here. They've knocked the ball around really nicely, to be fair. Beveda at right back on the overlap. Goes back to Alex B, who dinks it through to Gonzalez, who lays it off, and that's just an annoyingly good goal, isn't it? It's an annoyingly good goal. I feel like that was, was that their first shot? It's their first shot on target. They've knocked it around expertly, to be fair to them. I don't know if Lopez could have done a bit more running there. The ball was squared across, kind of left. Machado with no chance. And from the first half an hour where I was delighted to five minutes later, feeling a little bit nervy, might I say. But at the break, it would appear it's going to be 2-1. Two penalties, one scored. We started off well. I'm a little bit disappointed we couldn't capitalise more on the dominance because Deportivo definitely grew into that game as it went on. Not going to make any changes just yet because I'm not, I've been pretty happy on the whole with how we've played. It's going to be fine. Early goal here and we'll be laughing. Andy plays it inside and Bicho is there to score. Let's go. He loves his back post headers as Bicho. He's been top draw for us out on the left-hand side. When we lost Sehudo last year, who we lent on more than I wanted to, you know, a 37-year-old to be kind of one of the most important players, going into a new season thinking, I've got to replace him. I've got to find someone who can do the business. I think we found our man who can do the business. It's, it's Mr. Business himself would be very on brand, I feel like, for our season for us to concede immediately here. But of course, Bicho's going to want a hat-trick. He's going to want a third here. He's bringing it forward. Options in the middle... Tackle goes in. For a second, I was thinking it was going to be another penalty. But it's not on this occasion. Now it's Gonzalez bringing it forward down the far side. He dinks it forward to Galan, who already has one. Machado, can you make a stop? He makes the stop. And he parries it away from danger. And now we're gone. Probably going to make some changes after this as well. The ball's lumped forward. Not the best of free kicks. 
might I say, straight down Carlos's throat, who now clears it away, and it's now with Hector on this near side, who hits it, and... Machado? Are you, are you okay? Is he okay? I mean, maybe I should put Crespo back in goal. He's on a se he's got a seven point two allegedly, but what was this? Did he? I, I think he's got blindsided by the number five there, who was Hill. But Hill does not look happy. Machado's holding up his hands, going, "Sorry, lads." It's three two. It nothing's been simple about our time at Racing so far. I just get the feeling the rest of this game may not be simple. There's still half an hour left. I said I was going to make some changes. I still feel like I probably should make some changes, but now there's another highlight. I'm forgetting to breathe as I talk. Hector's through. Machado! <laughs> I don't know what's happening. How? 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 <laughs> oh, no. I'm just going to sit here with my head in my hands because I don't know what else to do with myself. That was a more difficult one for Machado to stop. I actually think he did quite a good job of making himself big. Lopez at left-back's had a nightmare. Uh... You know what? Mahika's coming off for Capani. We're going to bring in Cedric as well. And Di Vicente. Di Vicente, come on down. Plays a centre mid on attack. You've got this attacking instinct to you that we've not really seen yet this year. I'm not sure if playing a centre mid more attacking is the play, but it's the play I'm going to go with. The subs have been made. I think if the subs... if the su No, the, sub the subs haven't been made yet. There's another highlight. Of course there's another highlight. I kind of, okay, there's not another, relax, it's 20 minutes left, it's 3-3, I don't know how to feel about <laughs> this season so far, Di Vicente playing centre mid on attack, looking him bring the ball forward, fresh off the bench, gives it through to Capani, who has to score it, and Carlos makes a save, I just need a striker who gets a couple of goals, gets a bit of momentum, gets the wind in their sails, and they'll be flying, but at the moment, I've, I've just not got that player. And now they're bringing it forward. Hector's already got a few. Don't let him do anything more here. Lopez on a booking. Be careful, Lopez. Don't do anything silly. Oh, dear. Ten minutes left. There's a temptation to go more attacking, but I think I'm just going to shout demand more. Four minutes left. I mean, one point here is not a terrible result. Given what we've witnessed, it's an awful result. Tell me how I should feel. In the comments, just go down now. Am I unlucky? Am I am, am I naive? Am I dumb? I feel like we've got a tad unfortunate. The fact that we've not been able to win either of these games is a bit of a cause for concern. My only hope now is that maybe they slipped up around us. Uh, in fact, they did. Uh, Pontevedra lost 2-0, so we've got ahead of them. We're only two points behind Deportivo. Unfortunately for us, Pomfredina... Currently top of the league, looking very pretty. Now five points clear of us. They beat us 2-1. And well, with us slipping up again and again at the moment, they've slowly extended a gap that doesn't look so pretty. Anyway, in terms of upcoming games, the fixtures are going to turn for us now. We've got Azara, who are bottom. We've got teams in 18th. We've got Bilbao Athletic, who obviously a team that we're familiar with. The reality is that there are some games here that we really should be winning. And given the fact that we've played these two games in such quick succession after last episode, I'm quite keen to get a little further into the season. So in terms of when we're going to be back, I think I'm going to come back in January. I think, I think that's the play. You know, right now it's the middle of October. In that time, we will play 11 matches. That will see us just past the halfway mark. We'll have a pretty good idea with 15 games left of the season as to exactly where we're at. Um, of course, with this weird league format, the fact that only the top two go up mean that we need to just keep being at our best. We definitely weren't at our best today. Anyway, that is going to wrap up another action-packed episode here at Racing Santander. It's been absolutely bonkers this season so far. I don't quite know how to feel. Um... We're still in debt. There might be a takeover. May, may have even signed an Ari Andy Carroll replacement. I might need to go and find another striker. Oh, my word. I, I don't know. I don't know. Thank you for watching, everyone. We will be back again at the same time and place tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll catch you for that one. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>